Hey guys, it's me Sarah, the video editor here at Wholesale Ted, and in this video I'm going to give you the 5 big mistakes that people first make when they start importing goods from China. Now some of these are mistakes that I have personally made, and some of these are mistakes that my friends have made. In fact, a friend of mine recently made mistake number 3, and it cost him a lot of money in unexpected fees which massively ate into his profit margin. It was actually this incident that inspired me to make this video. Now just a quick disclaimer, most of my subscribers here at Wholesale Ted are looking to import products from China into the USA, so there is going to be a lot of USA specific advice in this video, but I will do my best to give everything a worldwide context as well. And another disclaimer, this video at times may get a bit technical, but I'll do my best to explain everything as simply as possible. So to find out what these mistakes are and how to avoid making them for yourself, keep watching this video. Mistake number one, assuming that shipping by sea will be the cheapest option. Now this is a classic mistake that I see a lot of new sellers make. They assume that if they ship by sea, then they will get a leg up on their competition. And they'll often tell this to me as though they've cracked some super secret code. Ooh, I'm gonna be different, I'm gonna be better, I'm gonna ship by sea. I found the secret! I'm gonna be really rich! Yeah, it doesn't work that way. The truth is, unless you are shipping in large quantities outside of China, it is usually cheaper to ship by air. Now shipping by sea is on the surface cheaper than shipping by air. You see, if you ship by sea, it will normally cost you around 60 cents a kilogram, whereas shipping by air carrier will normally cost you around $7 a kilogram. So that is a huge difference, and I can imagine that you're sitting there behind your computer thinking, Sarah, what are you talking about? You just said that shipping by sea is cheaper, so how can it ever be cheaper to ship by air? Well the thing is, is that for you to be able to get it that low in price, you need to be shipping by container and the containers are very large. This means that you're going to be shipping hundreds of kilograms. And if you can't fill a container by at least 60 to 70 percent, then again it will usually be cheaper to ship by air rather than by sea. Now a lot of my subscribers here at Wholesale Ted that are interested in importing goods from China will be private label manufacturers for Amazon FBA, and for most of you guys out there, you are not going to be shipping in large enough quantities to make it worthwhile shipping by container. Now let's talk about shipping by air. When it comes to shipping by air, you have two options. One, air freight, and two, air carrier. A lot of people hear this and they get confused, I mean, aren't they the same thing? Well, they are not. Carrier is dorsal shipment, so some carrier companies that you probably recognize are FedEx, UPS, and DHL. These companies have their own fleet of cargo planes, which ship items all around the world. Cargo carriers will pick up your items from your supplier and then drop them off at your location of choice. So again, for a lot of my subscribers here at Wholesale Ted, this is going to be an Amazon warehouse. On the other hand, air freight is when you simply have your cargo flown from one airport to the other. You see, airlines like Air China don't just carry cargo for their passengers, they also carry commercial cargo as well. And sometimes, this can be almost half the price of having your items taken by cargo. But like with all things in life, there is a catch. You still need to pay someone to pick up your cargo from your Chinese supplier and then drop it off at the airport. And you will need to source an independent customs broker to handle the documentation at the border. And you will also need to organize freight forwarding so that your cargo can be picked up from the port and dropped off at your location of choice. And again, for my subscribers here at Wholesale Ted, it's probably going to be an Amazon warehouse. There are often times, unfortunately, hidden fees in this that you don't account for on your very first time, which is why if you're importing for the first time and you're doing this, you need to allow a buffer. Now this all sounds probably a bit expensive, and yes, it can be, but it gets a lot better in larger quantities. The reason is that when it comes to air freight and forwarding companies, there are a lot more fixed fees, and obviously these fees scale as you ship larger quantities. Ultimately, if you are shipping something that is 50 kgs or less, it is almost certainly cheaper to ship by carrier rather than freight. And believe it or not, depending on the item that you are shipping, it may still be cheaper or comparable to use carrier rather than freight. The most important thing to do to avoid this mistake is to do your research ahead of time. There is a website called Freightos that lets you compare freight rates from different companies. I'll have a link to it in the video description below. Please be aware that it is an affiliate link. Here at Wholesale Ted, all of our YouTube videos are free and affiliate links help us keep our videos free. Mistake number two, not using the metric system when working with Chinese suppliers. 
Now, this is just a quick note for my subscribers here at Wholesale Ted that have not evolved to use the metric system like we have here in New Zealand. In China, they use the metric system as well and not the imperial system. So when you're working with your supplier, be sure to use kgs instead of pounds and be sure to use centimeters instead of inches. And this is just a general note to anyone that wants to work with Chinese suppliers. When you're working with a Chinese supplier, you need to be aware that they expect you to work on their terms and not on your terms. This means working on their timeframes and their schedules. As a foreigner, it is not culturally acceptable for you to be late to a meeting but it is culturally acceptable for them to be late to a meeting. Now, is this fair? No, but you're getting your items ridiculously cheap, so truthfully, I wouldn't really complain too much. Make things easy, work with them rather than against them. Mistake number three, using less than container load as your shipping option. Now, unfortunately, this can be a very costly mistake to make. And as I said at the start of this video, I have a friend of mine that made this mistake and again, it costs them a lot of money. So remember how earlier I was telling you that if you ship by sea, then you need to ship using an entire container. Well, a quick boring fact, this is called FCL, which stands for full container load. The truth is, is that this isn't the only option. You can also ship by renting basically a portion of a container. And this is called LCL, which stands for less than container load. You and other importers rent a portion of a container so that collectively it makes it worthwhile to ship by sea. So my friend discovered this and he thought, yes, this is great. This is my solution. I can still ship by sea with a small shipment and have rock bottom prices. In his mind, he had a fantastic plan. He was going to ship half of his cargo by air so that it would arrive in the Amazon warehouses quickly so that he could start selling very fast. And then he'd ship the rest of his cargo by sea using LCL so that he'd save lots of money and make even more profit. A perfect plan, right? Until I got a phone call from him. So Sarah, I purchased my inventory and I sent half of it by air and half of it by sea. And I was like, oh. And he's like, so the half that I sent by air, well, that's been fine. And I was like, well, no surprises there. But the half I sent by sea has accrued these huge charges at the port that I didn't expect, hundreds of dollars, and they are completely destroying my profit margins. Unfortunately, he wanted me to help him come up with a solution, but I didn't really have one. The thing about these companies that offer LCL shipping is that they usually don't make their money in the shipping process. Instead, they make their money at the port. This is because you have to pay huge fees at the port as a result of shipping with them. The reason for this is, again, these companies don't make their money during the shipping process. Instead, they make it at the port in the forms of commissions and kickbacks for the additional fees that you, the importer, have to pay there. It's a super dirty thing to do, and it preys upon new importers. You see, every port has its own destination service charges. In the United States, these usually are about $500 to $1,000 per container. So you would assume that because you're only renting a portion of the container, that you would be paying fees relative to the portion that you are using, right? Well, that is not the case. When you ship by LCL, you usually get slammed with a huge fee that instead of being based upon the container size, is based upon your share of the container in cubic meters. Essentially, you end up paying hundreds of dollars at the port and charges. And these can often be comparable to if you had shipped an entire container yourself. And then the company makes its money through commissions and kickbacks, which are called rebates. And so like my friend discovered, if you had instead shipped by ear, well, you would have saved a lot more money and your inventory would have gotten there a lot faster than if you had shipped by LCL. It's a slimy business. Do not fall for it. Do not fall for something that is too good to be true. Mistake number four, not checking what duties you have to pay. First of all, I want you to not worry. There is a simple solution to a seemingly complicated problem, and it's worthwhile doing so that you don't get slapped with an unexpected bill. This was a mistake that another friend of mine made. They did not correctly calculate what their duties would be. So when they got their bill, it was a bit of a sticker shock. In their case, they had not set aside the correct amount of money. So they had to scramble to get it together so that their inventory could be cleared at the border. Now, duties can be a bit complicated. For example, let's say that you are importing woolen jackets into the USA. Well, there isn't just one tax applied to all woolen jackets. There are other factors to consider when working out what your duty rate will be. 
For example, was the wool used for the jackets imported from Israel? Well, if so, Israel has a duty-free agreement with the USA in relation to wool. So if the wool used for your jackets came from Israel, then your duty rate will be cheaper. And here is another question. Do your woolen jackets contain synthetic fibers or are they pure wool? If they contain synthetic fibers, then your duty rate will be higher because of the fact that in the USA, there are higher duties applied to products made with synthetic fibers due to the additives used during the creation of synthetic fibers. But, you know, as the importer, it's unlikely that you are going to know the answers to all of these questions. But luckily, you don't need to because the chances are your supplier does. All items imported to the USA have what is called an HTS code slapped on them. And this HTS code has a duty rate applied to it. These codes account for all of the weird quirks like what types of fabrics were used. HTS stands for Harmonized Tax System. This is a huge manual containing over 17,000 codes. People spend their whole lives studying this. They get PhDs in this. Luckily, you don't need to. You just need to know what the HTS code is for the item that you're importing and most Chinese suppliers will be able to give it to you. When they do, just do a search for it and figure out what your duty rate is. Now, interesting fact, the system for classifying items is actually universal. So the chances are that even if you're not importing items into the USA, that your local country of residence has something similar as well. See, I told you that there is a simple solution to a seemingly complicated problem. Which leads me on to my final mistake. Mistake number five, being afraid to import because you're scared of making mistakes. I understand that it's easy to listen to this video and be afraid and put off from importing because of the fact that you're afraid of making mistakes like the people I've mentioned as well and also losing money. Because after all, if you screw up, that is going to cost you money and nobody wants to lose any money. And I'm gonna be honest with you, even if you follow a step-by-step -step system, there is a reasonable chance that you may still lose money from some unexpected fee that you didn't realize you were going to have to pay. And well, honestly, this is just life. And unfortunately, like my friend from mistake number three, this could massively eat into your profit margins. Well, here is the thing. My friend, he made that mistake, but now he knows. He has learned from his mistake. Next time, he will use air freight for all of his cargo, saving a lot of money and greatly increasing his profit margins. Sure, he lost some money the first time, but since he's done it once, he knows what to expect now and how to avoid those same mistakes that he first made. And of course, next time, he'll go on to make a lot of money. If he hadn't gone out there and tried, he'd still be stuck in the same place, doing the same old job, making no progress. The only way to guarantee failure is honestly to not try at all. But instead for him, he went out there, gave it a shot. No, it wasn't perfect, but the next time he set himself up to massively succeed. Mistakes are a part of entrepreneurship. Sure, learn from other people's mistakes and don't make the same ones, but don't be afraid to make your own. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you gave us a thumbs up and subscribe to us here at Wholesale Ted for more great videos about making money selling online. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section below. Admittedly, here at Wholesale Ted, we do get a lot of questions, but we try to answer as many as we can. And if you would like to start your own online business, but you don't know how, then you should be sure to download our free ebook, How to Make $10,000 a Month Online with Dropshipping. You'll find a link on how to download this incredible life-changing ebook in the video description below.